Chapter 8, The Hotel Blackstone A quick look at your screen will show you a building with the words Quintana Block on top and a sign below that, just above the striped awning, that reads Pedro Quintana. This is the building you're looking at now, just across the street from the Sinsheimer building where you're currently standing. Most local old-timers know it as the Hotel Blackstone, but this building began its long life in the mid-1800s when Francisco Estevan Quintana purchased the lot and built an L-shaped adobe structure on it that fronted both Choro and Monterey. He used the Choro Street site as his home and the Monterey Street site as a store. Quintana was one of the first settlers here, arriving from New Mexico in 1843. Having lost his first wife and childbirth back in New Mexico, he was remarried here to a woman named Maria, and that union resulted in eight children. Quintana made his fortune raising livestock. In 1876, Quintana tore down the old adobe, replacing it with a new, two-story building made from bricks he bought from Ah Louis. A letter from the period describes an alliance between the Chinese and Hispanic populations here, formed in defense against the Anglo community who regularly published angry tirades against the two minorities. Soon after the building was completed, Quintana developed an ulcerated leg which had to be amputated, and he died two years later, at age 80. His eldest son, Pedro, took over the family business, adding another story to the building. He married 13-year-old Luz Herrera and, like his father, raised eight children of his own. You can view a photo of the elder Quintana's wife, Maria, and Pedro's wife, Luz, on your screen. Pedro, also known as Pete, lived a wild life that included, among other scandals, a near-fatal backstabbing and an affair with his wife's young niece, Refugio. Here's the handsome Pedro on his wedding day in 1858. The backstabbing occurred at a local saloon during a typical drunken argument. When the bartender threw out the quarrelsome drunkard, Pedro Quintana confronted him on the street. But, thinking the fight was over when Pedro turned his back to the man, the drunkard stabbed him in the back and ran away. Pedro got lucky, the blade barely missed his heart, and he made a full recovery. But Pedro's heart had already moved away from his wife and become too deeply attached to his wife's young niece, Refugio. This scandal caused his wife, his children, and his grandchildren to move off the property, leaving Pedro and Refugio alone. Pedro would eventually leave his house to Refugio, and the rift between him and his family was never mended. To the day she died, Luz refused to be buried in the Quintana plot with her husband. We can cross Choro Street now to the edge of Mission Plaza, where you can find a bench or rock wall to sit on. There's a different view of the Hotel Blackstone from here. By 1886, the building included a general store known as the White House, a liquor store, post office, grocery warehouse, and offices on the second floor. Here's a photo taken from further down the block that shows a glimpse of the White House at the end of the street on the left. By 1891, a saloon was added as well as furnished rooms now available on the second floor. Pedro Quintana's sons, Juan and Joaquin, ran the dry goods store until Joaquin was arrested for reasons unknown and their firm became insolvent. Several tenants later, Monterey Street was widened and in 1912, the White House was demolished and the building underwent major renovations. It became the Blackstone Hotel European in the 1920s, and in 1926, a third story was added, as were the streamlined modern details still visible today. Pedro Quintana died in 1921, but another of his sons, probably Thomas Quintana, continued to run it. After a hundred years of ownership, the Quintana family sold the property in 1946 to Steve and Stella Zeger, who opened a furniture store downstairs and left the hotel rooms upstairs. See a photo of the old hotel from 1950 on your screen. By 1957, the hotel was no longer operating and the upper floors were used for storage. Over time, the building has been a bank, a children's department store, a restaurant, and the aptly named Cornerstone Realty. Copeland Properties bought it in 2005 and may incorporate it into a development known as the Chinatown Project. We'll turn around now to face the opposite direction and move back through the plaza. Take the terraced steps down to your left and find the path that leads to the right along the creek. You can take a seat on one of the benches or walls to hear about the evolution of this cheerful waterway, which has not always been so cheerful. 